my Tabli Bays and welcome to my channel, Tabli Times. Today, I'm going to talk about being a Posse Scholar at Cornell University and what that looks like and my journey to Posse and what Posse provides. So my Posse journey started on my couch the summer going into senior year. My sister texted me the link to the website because her friend told her about it and she told me that I should apply. And I was very like, okay, whoa, this is really intense. I don't really know if I'm gonna get it. Like, this seems very vague. I never heard of this, what is this? And I go on the website and like, I don't see the university I wanna go to. So I'm just like, all right, like whatever. But I guess I'll apply. And you have to get nominated. So I was nominated by an organization I volunteered for a lot in the past. And I had my first round interview. And so I show up to my first round interview and I had no idea like how intense this is. I hadn't even seen like the video that you see on the website about Posse and just the process and the scholarship. So I like show up and there's so many people, they're dressed up. It was my first time seeing people from a military academy. So they were wearing like their uniforms and I was like, okay, this is like really serious. But I honestly had no, like I had not had that expectation and I think because I didn't know so much about Posse, I was more, I was able to just be myself and be organic and be natural. And I think that really was a blessing because I wasn't trying to be performative. I was just being what I thought I needed to do. So I think that was really, really nice. So the first round interview happened and he said, maybe you'll get called for a second round interview. We'll see. And I was like, okay, like whatever. I. I still am going to go to the state school probably because I really wanted to go to the University of Illinois or Urbana-Champaign. I really wanted to go there and I was set and that's just what I always thought I was going to do. So I was like, if this happens, it happens. If it doesn't, like whatever. And so I um, got called for my second round interview and it was a one-on-one -on -one interview. And I remember I needed a lot of things to give to Posse and my counselor was kind of like, what is this, you know, what, what's happening? And I was like, yeah, I don't know, but they want this and that and this and that. And he was like, okay. And I filled it out and I did my interview. And then when you go to your second round interview, they ask you to rank the top five schools from the 12 schools that they partner with. So I think I had like ranked like UW-Madison, Cornell and like three other schools but I wasn't really interested in the other schools I really wanted to go to UW-Madison I think <laughs> but um I had my interview and how Posse works is you don't get to say oh I want to interview for this school it, you rank the schools and then they match you based on what they deem fit so that's like a really important thing um, people like need to know is that just because I really really want to go to Cornell doesn't mean that I'm going to get to interview for Cornell um, and so that's just kind of how it works so I did my second round interview and I got the email that I was a finalist for Cornell and I was like oh so I got it like great <laughs> but no I had one more interview with the other finalists and we had to decide if we wanted to do early decision and commit so if we did the, the third round interview and we got into posse we were also e being into cornell so you had to be on board to go to cornell it was not a choice once you got into the scholarship so i was like okay early decision is really scary when you're not a hundred percent in love with the place that you are committing to so i was a little bit like I don't know if I should do this like it's really saying goodbye to a plan that I've had forever and I'm a big planner I'm not a big fan of change like that and I was just like I don't know if I want to do this it's kind of scary <laughs> I know nothing about Cornell I didn't even want to go out of state what is Ithaca where is that why is it four hours away from New York City and my family was just like listen like do you think you're gonna get it and I was like I don't know I don't think I don't, like I don't know and they're like well just try because like if you try and you get it great if you try and you don't get it that's also great because you still get to go to where you where you wanted to go for the past years um so I I 
was like, okay. And so I accepted, I ED'd to Cornell. And um, I met a girl in my first art interview who was also a finalist for Cornell. And she decided to not do it. I was kind of sad because I really we became friends and I liked her and she was really sweet. I went to the third round interview and there was like 25 other people there brilliant people so smart so nice just so amazing people and i was like this is hard <laughs> like this is gonna be intense i knew it was gonna be like really really intense and they started it off with like this bingo sheet where you had to find somebody who does this and this one girl who's in my posse she started singing and i was like oh okay <laughs> and this other guy my posse who i love he was like doing poetry and i was like like what skill can i just pull out of my pocket i was like okay i played the saxophone but there was already a guy who did that and he is like really committed to it so i was like okay i'm like i like play the saxophone in like band but like i'm not in love with it so i don't want to pull that out i was like um what is my <laughs> what is like my like party trick i don't know um so it was a bit like okay i don't know what i'm gonna use with like my secret card but it was fine like I got to know people I got to talk to the two people that were representatives of Cornell and we did a bunch of activities and I remember just talking to people and I was like oh, this person is so smart and so brilliant like they're gonna get it and they're gonna get it and they're gonna get it and um and I was like maybe I might get it I don't I don't know like there's just a lot of like too much too much amazingness in one room. I don't know how they're even gonna decide. Like, they might as well like draw our names out of a hat at this point because there's like no fair way, I don't think. So uh, I did the interview and I was like, okay, I think it went well. I think I have a fair, pretty good shot, but whatever happens, like it's, it's fine. And um, I had a missed call from Posse on Monday and my interview was on Thursday. And I didn't notice until Tuesday. And I was in my AP Lit class with my one of my favorite English teachers she's so awesome and I was like hey like I have this missed call from Posse and her voicemail and she knew what I was going through she was helping me throughout the whole process and she was like call them back right now and I was like er, right now like we're talking about like Nabokov like poetry <laughs> like right now and she's like yeah let's go and so she like left the classroom for a second and I called Posse and I was like hey like I had a missed call I just wanted to call back and they were like, we want your survey for how you thought the interview went and anything you think we could improve about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, really? You called me for this? Like, really? So, but I was like, of course, yes. I really thought XYZ was great. I might have changed this, but I understand why I went this way, blah, 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 blah. And then like the last question, she was just like, oh, um, what's your favorite animal? And I was like, okay, they're quirky. <laughs> and my teacher was like, say a bear. And I was like, no, I cannot play myself. Like, I'm not doing that. I was like, I gotta be me, okay, I gotta be me. And then I was like, does the animal have to be real? And she was like, what? <laughs> she was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, a unicorn. I love unicorns, like, whole explanation. And then she was just like, oh, like, I'm so, uh, she's like, oh, I wish you had said a bear because like Cornell, Posse, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? And I ended the call by saying, thank you so much for your consideration. Don't know why, like that makes no sense, but I was just so shocked. So I'm gonna let it go. And my teacher was like, and I was just like, what? And then yeah, and it took me until I got to campus to process this information because what? I got like a full tuition scholarship to Cornell University as a posse scholar. And at that time I had no idea what it truly meant to be a posse scholar. So if I had known that, I think I would have lost it. But it was a really magical moment. So I didn't even tell my parents until I got home because I wanted to tell her in person. So, it was crazy. 
So after that phone call, I was one of 10 in Cornell Posse 6. Here is a picture of my posse. There's 10 of us and I love them all so much. They are very, very special to my heart. So how Posse works is once you get the scholarship, you go to um, the Posse office in Chicago once a week for nine months, building this bond with the rest of your cohort. So we did that and we had two trainers at the Posse office that were like responsible for running our workshops and we built this really strong connection with them and I love my trainers. Neither of them work at Posse anymore but we still have a really good relationship and that's like really one of the nice things about Posse is that like they're Posse scholars too and so we're always a part of this connect this network. We always have this bond so that's really really special. And then when we get to campus at Cornell we have a mentor on campus that's a professor of the university so I didn't know that so I thought that like my two mentors from Chicago were going to come to New York which was a very silly assumption but an easy one to make okay so no that's not how it works so Cornell was really nice and they flew us out in April to see the campus and to get to know the other posses so there's a posse that goes to Cornell every year. So we were Cornell Posse 6 and Cornell Posse 5 who were freshmen on campus were gonna be the ones that would host us. And then there was Cornell Posse 4 and 3 also on campus. So, um, and two? Five, five, four, three, two. Yeah, there we go. So it was really great. And like they hosted us and they really like told us about what, what campus is like and we got to like meet them. and. Be, when you're a Posse Scholar, like, you know, like, all the other Posse Scholars, so when you see them on campus, you're like, oh my god, hey, like, hey, you know, we have that connection, like, always say hi, Posse Scholars will always support each other, we have, like, our own group chat, that's, like, all of us on campus, it's, it's a really, really just nice family, home away from home, so we, like, learned about Cornell, and I realized that this place is really hilly, and I was, like, okay like i'm from illinois we're used to just flat land so it was a bit like okay a lot of hills i don't know how i feel about that but whatever i'll talk a little bit about the weekly meetings we had before we went to campus so we did that for nine months it's called pct pre-collegiate training and we did these workshops facilitated by our trainers and it was just a way for us to like bond and it took a long time to for all of us to open up I think it's because we're seeing each other for only two hours, like once a week, it's gonna take time. And we're not just like kind of talking to each other the whole time, like we're actually doing workshops. So um, like we're learning together too. So um, it took a while and I was very shy. And also I was just trying to understand what was going on because I really had no idea. I mean, I think they told us, but I still was not comprehending what was really happening. And I was like, I, I don't know what I've gotten myself into. I was like, do I even see myself being friends with any of these people? Like, I don't know. It took a while, but we slowly, <laughs> slowly got to a place where we were all like openly able to converse with each other. And Posse also like, it's not just like, okay, workshop, workshop, workshop. Like, no, we also had like days where they just like took us out to eat by ourselves so they like gave us the money and they're like go to Giordano's they're like okay <laughs> so we like got to bond over food um which is very very helpful and then Posse also does like a bunch of um like tr retreats so we had a retreat with two other cohorts and we just like celebrated our nine months of getting to know each other and like this is the this is a step before we, this is a step we take before we go to campus. Uh, we also have, our last posse meeting is um, like the Ring of Fire, I think that's what it's called. And we just kind of do a little scavenger hunt type thing and make memories that we will look back on in a few years, a few months. So it was a really, really special time. Once you're on campus, the weekly meetings still continue, but they're facilitated by our mentor for the first semester. And then the second semester, we also facilitate some for each other. And we also have bi-weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings with our mentor. So you're in Posse a lot your first two years. And I loved it. I mean, I love getting to know other posses. I love staying connected to my posse. We also lived in the same building our freshman year. So it was like 
oh, I want to go say hi to like XYZ and I can just go to their room and just be like, hey, and people would drop by to my room sometimes and we'd get dinner together and just like see each other and have fun and support each other at events. And it was really, really fun. And um, the second year, we didn't all, we didn't all live together again, um, just cause like, you know, you wanna live in different places. Um, but we still have our weekly meetings and our bi-weekly one-on-ones with our mentor. And so it's kind of sad that the semester ended early because we didn't get to like close out our meetings, but it's fine. Um, but like, even though we weren't together all the time, like I could still rely on my posse and I'm close to some more than others, but we're all like supportive of each other, which is really important and special. Being a posse scholar at Cornell, people know, like, when I say, oh, I'm a posse scholar, they're like, oh, okay. Like, they know. You know, usually I don't have to explain it too often. And that just shows, like, the impact that we have on the campus and the weight that posse holds. And not only that, like, that carries over into when I apply for internships and when I want, like, career prep. Posse provides all of that. They have workshops when, like, over winter and over the summer for us to improve our skills. They'll help us get headshots taken. They have connections, and sometimes, like, when you tell a company, oh, I'm a Posse Scholar, they will be like, okay, we want to interview you because we know what it means to be a Posse Scholar. We know that that means leadership, X, Y, Z. So I really, really, really am grateful for that. Um, Posse actually helped me get my internship last summer, and I met two other Posse scholars there, and we became really good friends. And one of them, like, I visit her when I go to New York. She's a really, really good person, really, really good people. And so that's, like, the special thing about, about Posse is when you meet someone and you guys both realize, oh, you are a part of Posse, you have that instant connection, that instant bond, because they understand that journey that you went on and that you guys are both on. So it's, it's really magical. You also gotta make sure that people know why you're a Posse Scholar because people will try to dismiss it and be like, oh, you're just some like poor kids from like Chicagoland area. And I'm like, no. Well, yes and no. Like, yes, we are low income sometimes, not all of us. But also, this is a merit-based scholarship merit-based so we were recognized for our leadership and our abilities and our potential and so that's really important to not let people take that away but usually at, at Cornell like people don't do that so that's pretty good but other places they will because they think oh like especially like if you're like a POC like they'll be like oh, okay like that makes sense I'm like yeah why why does it make sense oh yeah because I'm a leader exactly so that was my posse journey. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them. I might do another video of like more what it's like to be a Cornell student, but I wanted to do that when I was on campus so I could show you guys around. That's fine. We'll get to it when, whenever it happens. Um, but thank you so much for watching Tabby Bays and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.